The government of St. Kitts and Nevis has taken another step closer towards creating a cannabis industry when it activated the Cannabis Act today, 20th April 2023, through the official publication in the Gazette. The Cannabis Act was passed in 2020 and was aimed at setting up a medicinal cannabis authority. However, the legislation was not fully activated. A release from the Prime Minister's office states in part, quote, only parts one and two of the act setting out preliminary matters related to the establishment of the medicinal cannabis authority were activated, end quote. Now with the legislation fully activated, Minister of Agriculture Samuel Duggins and the Cannabis Authority can now proceed to aggressively pursue the cannabis agenda for St. Kitts and Nevis. However, government has consistently stated that the establishment of the industry will be done in a responsible manner, as said by Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew in a recent statement. He said, quote, The diversification of our economy involves exploring avenues like the medicinal cannabis industry, which can provide a sustainable income for our people. However, the government is also serious about tackling substance abuse and its impact on the society. This is why the Ministry of National Security is finalizing the National Substance Abuse Plan 2023 to 2028. We are a responsible government and will always act in the best interest of our people's economic growth and physical health. End quote. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. The Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force received the report of a boating incident which occurred just off the coast of Nevis. Investigations have since revealed that Ishmael Handley, a 58-year-old Jessup's Village resident, has succumbed to his injuries inflicted by the propeller of a passing boat. The report stated that at approximately 1.45 p.m. on Wednesday, a boat bearing the name Point Proven, belonging to the company Islander Water Sports, was near the Nevis coast and traveling towards the Four Seasons Resort on the island. On board were two crew members and seven guests and the captain. While at an approximate distance of five miles offshore, the boat captain rep reported that he felt the impact of something under the boat. Upon check-in, he saw a man, later identified as Ishmael Handley, in the water waving for assistance. The captain took Handley onto the boat and transported him to the Charlestown Pier, who was then transported to the Alexandra Hospital. He, however, succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead on arrival. The police force extended its condolences in a release issued to the media to those who are impacted by Mr. Handley's passing. Further investigations into the incident are ongoing and the general public will be updated appropriately, the police said. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. started singing another wonderful day ah! what would you say about staying here for a few months or like a year just so that we can be together again and just live and love and laugh and have fun and breathe hiding out on a little Caribbean island, singing in a beach bar. When I came here, I was at peace, and I never left. This is the beating heart of Nevis. This is what grounds me, what feeds my soul. It's where I found myself. I hope your life here will be full of joy. Love this island, my son. She will give you more than you can imagine. Want to buy some fresh fruits, vegetables, or ground provision, but don't have the time to go to the market or even to find parking? Look no further. Green, Green market, market and, and delivery, delivery is, is your, your solution. solution. 
Green Market and Delivery is an e-commerce store that sells and delivers local produce to customers in St. Kitsinevis. Anything you purchase, you can get fresh from the market and deliver directly to your door. Log on to www.greenmarketskn.com. Click on the e-store link, choose your items and shop away. We have a wide array of products from fruits, vegetables, local products, spices and seasonings and much more. Save time and energy. Shop on greenmarketskn.com. Your Your one-stop shop for for fresh fresh local local produce. Online radio has never been this great. It's Voice of the Caribbean Radio at voiceofthecaribbean.net. Tune into Voice of the Caribbean Radio for great Caribbean programs, news, entertainment, sports, and current affairs. Wake up each morning and be inspired with One Day at a Time with Kim Huey. Stay abreast with news across the Caribbean and internationally with the Caribbean News Hour and be entertained with shows like Reggaeville, Caribbean Classics, and Jive Music Show. Visit our website, download our Android mobile app, or listen us on TuneIn Radio. There is so much more on Voice of the Caribbean Radio, reaching the Caribbean and beyond. Check website or app for program schedule. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports, all from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Youth football is back as the SKNFA presents three youth competitions in one month. The SKNFA Premier Youth Cup Under-13, the Atiba Harris Under-15 Youth League, and the Keith Gums Under-17 Youth Cup, starting Saturday, April 22nd. The SKNFA Premier Youth Cup and Atiba Harris Under-15 League will be played on Saturdays at Warner Park and at the SKNFA Technical Center, and the Keith Gums Under-17 Youth Cup playing at the Technical Center and the Atiba Erasto Harris Sporting Complex on Sundays. Visit the SKNFA Facebook and Instagram pages for match schedules and participating teams. Come out and support the young football stars of tomorrow as we journey towards youth football glory. Matches begin at 10 a.m. The government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, continues to strengthen bilateral relations with the government of St. Kitts and Nevis through its yearly financial contributions to human development through various projects. According to a press release from the Prime Minister's office, His Excellency Ambassador Michael Xiao Hong Ling, Resident Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, to St. Kitts and Nevis, in a check handing over ceremony held at the Prime Minister's office on Thursday, donated 1.5 million U.S. dollars to the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew expressed his gratitude to Ambassador Lin, stating, I accept this generous donation with great satisfaction and wish for you to convey to the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, the appreciation and the interest in continuing to unite efforts between both countries so as to further strengthen the relations of cooperation and friendship. According to the release, the donation will assist community enhancement projects, Special Olympics, the seniors daycare and provide financial support for athletic projects within the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. Having a renewed push for the expansion of small business in St. Kitts is being pursued, according to Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew. But it is not just about increasing access to finance to start small businesses, but about technical and auto support services that are required to ensure that small business can have a high chance of success. According to the Prime Minister, avoiding the policies and actions undertaken by the previous administration is also essential to achieve success. We are making those funds available so that our people can have the opportunity to enter into businesses as well. However, we want to give them the other support that they need so that they can be successful. Because too many times somebody go, they get the resources, where's the business? No business set up. I would also say that was part of the scheme that took place in the Development Bank under the last administration. Write up a loan, come, get the loan. No business. People who get the loan, they come back and give $10,000 to whoever they give the $10,000 to. Or $20,000. That was a scheme again to get money. 
So you look on the books, a lot of money for businesses, can't find the businesses, not, not even the start of a business. These are the kind of, these are the travesties that took place in immigration, in the bank. We, that is why we, we suffered a deficit last year. That is why the development bank was on the verge of collapse. That is why bad policies again affected the National Bank. National Bank for the first time in its history, I think, I might be, I might be corrected, but I'm almost certain I'm sure, for the first time, could not pay a dividend, suffered a loss. So we had to take over banking sector and try to get it back on track. And so many of these very difficult situations, the CBI, the banks and so forth, we had to stabilize this thing. And that is why I thought it was important that I go to the spring meeting and spend the time that I spent there so that we can stabilize our economy and diversify it. The Prime Minister believes the administration is closer to achieving its goals in the establishment of the Small Business Ministry, whose success could strengthen the Federation's economy. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. started singing another wonderful day ah! what would you say about staying here for a few months or like a year just so that we can be together again and just live and love and laugh and have fun and breathe hiding out on a little Caribbean island, singing in a beach bar. When I came here, I was at peace, and I never left. This is the beating heart of Nevis. This is what grounds me, what feeds my soul. It's where I found myself. I hope your life here will be full of joy. Love this island, my son. She will give you more than you can imagine. Want to buy some fresh fruits, vegetables, or ground provision, but don't have the time to go to the market or even to find parking? Look no further. Green, Green Market, market and, and Delivery, delivery is, is your solution. solution. Green Market and Delivery is an e-commerce store that sells and delivers local produce to customers in St. Kitsinevis. Anything you purchase, you can get fresh from the market and delivered directly to your door. Log on to www.greenmarketskn.com. Click on the e-store link, choose your items and shop away. We have a wide array of products from fruits, vegetables, local products, spices and seasonings and much more. Save time Time and energy. Shop on GreenMarketSKN.com, your, your one-stop one shop, shop for, for fresh, fresh local, local produce. Online radio has never been this great. It's Voice of the Caribbean Radio at VoiceOfTheCaribbean.net. Tune into Voice of the Caribbean Radio for great Caribbean programs, news, entertainment, sports, and current affairs. Wake up each morning and be inspired with One Day at a Time with Kim Huey. Stay abreast with news across the Caribbean and internationally with the Caribbean News Hour and be entertained with shows like Reggaeville, Caribbean Classics and Jive Music Show. Visit our website, download our Android mobile app or listen us on TuneIn Radio. There is so much more on Voice of the Caribbean Radio, reaching the Caribbean and beyond. Check website or app for program schedule. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports, all from sknnewsline.com. 
That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Youth football is back as the SKNFA presents three youth competitions in one month. The SKNFA Premier Youth Cup Under-13, the Atiba Harris Under-15 Youth League, and the Keith Gums Under-17 Youth Cup, starting Saturday, April 22nd. The SKNFA Premier Youth Cup and Atiba Harris Under-15 League will be played on Saturdays at Warner Park and at the SKNFA Technical Center, and the Keith Gums Under-17 Youth Cup playing at the Technical Center and the Atiba Erasto Harris Sporting Complex on Sundays. Visit the SKNFA Facebook and Instagram pages for match schedules and participating teams. Come out and support the young football stars of tomorrow as we journey towards youth football glory. Matches begin at 10 a.m. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has landed in Havana for talks on boosting cooperation and friendship ties. This after Lavrov's four-hour whirlwind visit to Nicaragua amid his Latin America tour, where he met with President Daniel Ortega. The trip comes on the heels of an announcement from Washington that it's issuing new sanctions against three Nicaraguan judges. Lavrov stressed the need for Russia's allies to join forces and stand up to the U.S. We развитие наших отношений в материальной сфере, в торговой, экономической, инвестиционной. Здесь ключевая роль принадлежит межправительственной комиссии по торгово-экономическому сотрудничеству и условили, что ее сопредседатели проведут очередную встречу на полях Санкт-Петербургского экономического форума в июне этого года. Ortega and Lavrov downplayed the impact of U.S. sanctions on officials from both their countries. In February, Ortega's government stripped 222 exiled opponents of their nationality. Russia is one of Nicaragua's key trading partners and provides it wheat, public buses, taxi cabs and the COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik. Officials say a meeting between Lavrov and President Miguel Diaz-Canel might be on the table. It comes a day after D.S. Canel was re-elected by the National Assembly for a second five-year term. In a scenic spot of Cape State on Tuesday, just off the carefully manicured golf green, the discovery of a car belonging to Omar De Freitas, the father and body holiday water sports manager who had gone missing following a January 6th staff party at the Cape State Golf and Country Club. An extensive island-wide search was launched to find the missing father with no positive outcomes. But this morning, the reduced water levels exposed the partially submerged car in a pond a few meters from where the staff party was held. Deputy Commissioner of Police Ronald Phillip confirmed the discovery was made early Tuesday. The discovery was made about 7 a.m. this morning. Um, but the scene is currently being processed because we treat every since we since we were able to confirm the number as as that of the missing vehicle from um, January 6, we were treating it as a homicide, which is which is customary in any investigations where there's disappearance, where there's a missing person. Special machinery was brought in to retrieve the vehicle from the pond. It all proceeded in stages. First, the confirmation that the car was that of Omar De Freitas. Because we're treating every disappearance has been treated as a homicide investigation. So the divers are not crime scene officers. The divers, the divers, would they, they, they can confirm the B6, for example, the number plates, what have you. So when the vehicle, when the vehicle is hosted out of the water, then a further examination by the crime scene officers. Because you have to understand, we have to preserve, we have to preserve the integrity of the so-called exhibit. Because we may very well be dealing with a homicide investigation, or it may very well be uh, an accident. But the point I'm making is we need to treat it as a homicide so that we don't make any mistakes. By mid-afternoon Tuesday, there was confirmation of human remains in the car. The police had been informing Omar's loved ones of the developments. Though there is strong suspicion that the remains are that of the missing man, father, son, brother and friend, Omar De Freitas. It would require further examinations for that strong suspicion to be confirmed. Then questions on how did his car end up in the pond and if these are indeed the remains of Omar De Freitas, was he killed or did he die of natural causes? 
All of this should be made clear following further investigations by the police, though this appears to be a significant breakthrough in the Omar Defrater's disappearance, providing some closure to the loved ones. The investigations into this mystery are far from over. Stanley Lucien for the HS News Force. This is the moment of the stampede in Sana'a. Hundreds of people have gathered at a school to receive donations from a wealthy businessman. As the crowd surged, chaos ensued and many were trapped in a narrow alley. The hospital has received 73 people. Among them are those who are in critical condition. There are two patients in intensive care and 13 other cases are in need of surgeries. Local authorities blame poor planning. The Houthis, who control northern Yemen, including the capital, say they've arrested two local businessmen whom they accuse of failing to coordinate with the police. We want to investigate the unfortunate events and find a solution to make sure it never happens again. This is a great tragedy. Many of our citizens died. At the end of Ramadan, Poor people often gather outside the houses or businesses of wealthy people hoping to receive money. During the holy month, Muslims are not only required to fast, but also to repent and show compassion for those less fortunate. Witnesses blame security forces for opening fire to disperse the crowd, which they say caused panic. What happened was a big tragedy, and the Houthi leadership is keeping a close eye on the situation. Beset by years of violence and instability, Yemen is one of the poorest countries. The United Nations describes it as the world's worst humanitarian crisis. The stampede happened just days after the Houthis and Saudi officials discussed a truce to end the war and reopen airports. Hashim al Al Jazeera. An eerie quiet in what are usually busy streets and shops. President Gustavo Petro ordered 2,500 people to leave the town of Murillo two weeks ago. Over fears, the nearby Nevado del Ruiz volcano could erupt. Many decided to stay. But tourists are staying away. La gente tiene miedo de venir. People are afraid to come here. We are very affected. We were waiting for Easter, which is a good season, but we had major losses because they closed everything. There is unemployment because people who used to work in different places are out of work. Last month, authorities issued an orange alert, warning of a probable eruption in the coming days or weeks. The Colombian Geological Services has since recorded an increase in seismic activity and clouds of volcanic ash. Many small business owners and farmers say they can't afford to leave. They have asked us to leave, but our jobs are here. Many people have a lot of work with cattle. Local hotels, restaurants and shops face heavy losses. Those who already have little say they have no choice. Our life is worth more than an animal and other things. But as poor people, we have to go on. It's not fair that we leave our homes and our belongings behind. If the government supports us, it will be helpful, but we can't lose our things. For now, people here say they have little option but to wait. Lina Abu Akle, Al Jazeera.
Over in the Western Conference, the Memphis Grizzlies also bounce back to level their series against the Los Angeles Lakers. The second-seeded Grizzlies had injury problems of their own to deal with, with two-time All-Star Jean Morant ruled out of the game just two hours before tip-off. But like the Bucks, the Grizzlies put on a clinic in team basketball. Six players registered double-digit scores. 24-year-old Xavier Tillman scored a playoff career-high 22 points, and he also grabbed 13 rebounds. The legend LeBron James scored a game-high 28 points, but he was constantly drawn into a verbal altercation with Dylan Brooks of the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies won 103-93 to and could have Morant back for Game 3 in L.A. It wasn't need to be a discussion. I mean, at the end of the day, we understand what a series is all about. I mean, uh, you know, it's not the first of one win or two. It's the first of four. And um, you got to prepare each and every game. Every game is its own entity. So you got to prepare for that challenge. And, um, you know, I felt like we was prepared tonight. Um, we just didn't execute as well as we did in game one. Uh, for close to 48 minutes. Uh, so they made adjustments. We made some adjustments. And, you know, you, you tip your hat to them. They, they played a, a, well, a well of a game tonight. Welcome to the SKN Newsline Weather Report. I am Janil Boone. Here is a look at the forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis. detailed weather report visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com